Look, I also try to avoid eating too much fruit because spiking your blood sugar is not healthy in the long run. And I know that sounds controversial coming from someone who studies longevity, but let me explain why. I've dedicated my career to understanding how we age and what we can do about it. My research focuses on comprehensive health strategies, predominantly plant-based nutrition, time-restricted eating protocols, and specific supplementation to enhance longevity and biological vitality. Today, I want to share something specific with you, the top three fruits I personally incorporate into my diet. And this focus is particularly important because I need you to understand the detrimental effects of excessive sugar intake on our overall health and aging processes. Clearly, any type of sugar is bad. Raw sugar, fructose, sucrose, bad carbohydrates. I would try to not eat too much of unprocessed carbohydrates. Keeping your blood sugar levels at a steady level, not too high, is clearly important. Nobody would doubt that. Cancer cells, by the way, love sugar. They live on sugar. And that's another reason why you should try to keep it low. Cancer cells won't grow as well. We all have cancer cells in our body all the time. Every day we have cancer starting up and our bodies kill it. As we get older, our bodies don't do that as effectively. Our immune system goes down and cancer can now multiply. So if you stay young biologically, you probably won't get cancer. Now, while I generally prioritize vegetables over fruits due to their lower fructose content, there are three fruits that hold a special place in my nutritional regimen. And I'm going to share them with you today, along with the science behind why I choose them. Avocado, my top choice. If I could only eat one food, it would probably be avocados. When people ask me about my top foods, um, not just limiting to fruits, but of all foods I could choose, I single out avocados without hesitation. And there's a very specific scientific reason for this. Avocado is often hailed as a superfood for numerous reasons, and it's become a staple in my daily diet for good reason. Avocados are packed with essential nutrients. They're rich in vitamin C, E, K, and B vitamins, including folate. Additionally, they contain minerals such as potassium, magnesium, and copper, all of which are vital for various bodily functions, including nerve function, muscle contraction, and bone health. But the main reason I pick avocados um, as my top choice stems from their remarkably high content of oleic acid. And this is where the longevity science gets really interesting. Uh, oleic acid is produced when we're hungry and our fat breaks down, but we can also get oleic acid from olive oil, avocados, and nuts. And it may be that the benefits we get from those foods are largely because those foods are turning on our defense pathways against aging. Oleic acid will activate sirtuin-1, which is an enzyme that controls longevity in our bodies. And so we know at least some of the components such as oleic acid are extremely beneficial, as well as those unsaturated fats that come from avocados. Let me explain this more clearly. Avocados are primarily composed of healthy monounsaturated fats, particularly oleic acid. These fats are beneficial for heart health because they help to reduce levels of LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, while increasing levels of HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. The presence of oleic acid also contributes to the fruit's anti-inflammatory properties. And inflammation, as I've discussed in my research, is one of the primary drivers of aging. Uh, Oleic acid, a monounsaturated omega-9 fatty acid, maintains cell membrane integrity, regulates gene expression related to inflammation and cell survival, and acts as an antioxidant neutralizing harmful free radicals. By modulating these pathways, oleic acid helps mitigate age-related inflammation oxidative stress, and cellular damage, ultimately promoting overall health and longevity. Avocados are also an excellent source of dietary fiber with both soluble and insoluble fiber varieties. This fiber content aids in digestion, promotes satiety, and helps regulate blood sugar levels, making it beneficial for weight management and reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes. They contain various antioxidants, including carotenoids such as lutein and zeaxanthin, which are essential for eye health and may help reduce the risk of age-related macular degeneration. Antioxidants help protect cells from damage caused by free radicals, thereby reducing inflammation and lowering the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease and certain cancers. And here's what I really want you to understand. Avocados are sugar-free. I stress this because our modern diet is so full of sugar, it is best to minimize the intake of sugar, whether it being glucose or fructose. Well, there's glucose and fructose. 
Okay. So it doesn't really matter where you get it. These are just chemicals, it's the same chemical wherever you get it from. Uh, glucose, you need glucose, right? We, again, we die without glucose. But the foods in our world are so full of sugars that we're constantly feeding ourselves more sugar than we ever would have experienced even just 100 years ago. Compared to foods with added sugar, foods naturally containing sugars usually provide essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, making them nutrient dense. I definitely like fruit and I eat fruit and I encourage it with my kids. It's a balance. You want the most nutrition and vitamins and the lower amount of sugar on a scale of that ratio. I think Rhonda Patrick's right that grapes have more sugar than nutrition compared to other fruits. However, within the spectrum, there are two other fruits I've singled out for their exceptional balance of fructose and nutrients. Fruit, hash to cantaloupe or rock melon, the most nutritious the next would be cantaloupe or rock melon, as I would call it, as a fruit that's the most nutritious you can get. The other fruit that I think is worth looking at is cantaloupe or rock melon that I believe has the most nutrition versus sugar of any fruit. Cantaloupe, also known as rock melon, offers a favorable balance of fructose and nutrients compared to many other fruits. And when I'm looking at optimizing my diet for longevity, this balance matters tremendously. With a lower glycemic index than high fructose options like grapes and mangoes, cantaloupe has a gentler impact on blood sugar levels, making it a wise choice for individuals managing diabetes or seeking blood sugar control. And remember what I said about keeping blood sugar stable. This is critically important for longevity. Moreover, its rich hydration properties, owing to its high water content, make it an excellent choice for replenishing fluids especially during warm weather or after physical exertion. Hydration is something we often overlook in longevity research, but it's fundamental to cellular function. Beyond its hydrating qualities, cantaloupes boast an impressive array of vitamins and minerals that I look for in foods. They're particularly lauded for their robust vitamin C content, essential for bolstering immune function and collagen synthesis, as well as their abundance of vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, crucial for maintaining healthy vision and skin. Remarkably, in certain studies, cantaloupes have been found to contain comparable levels of beta carotene to carrots. That surprised me when I first learned it because we always think of carrots as the beta carotene champion. Additionally, they provide potassium vital for regulating blood pressure and supporting muscle function. As we age, maintaining muscle function becomes increasingly important for independence and quality of life. When I'm choosing fruits, I'm looking at the complete nutritional package, not just sugar content, but the ratio of beneficial compounds to fructose. And cantaloupe hits that sweet spot, if you'll excuse the pun. Overall, cantaloupes offer a multifaceted nutritional profile, making them a valuable addition to any balanced diet focused on longevity. Fruit hash three, colorful berries, the xenohomesis powerhouses. The types of fruits that I like to have are ones that have lots of polyphenols, colored fruits such as blueberries, blackberries, those things. You don't want to eat too many of them, of course, because then you're basically eating tons of sugar anyway. But yeah, blueberries I would have in a yogurt in the morning if I had some. Blueberries, I snack on those pretty often. Now, colored berries like blueberries and blackberries are high in polyphenols, a class of antioxidants found in plant foods. And this is where my research gets really interesting. Polyphenols found in berries offer numerous health benefits, primarily through their antioxidant activity, anti-inflammatory effects, and positive impact on cardiovascular health. I can look for foods that have a lot of color, the purples, the reds, the very deep greens. These are signs that the plants are making healthy molecules, polyphenols. These little chemicals that are found in plants, when particularly when those plants are stressed out, plants under stress produce chemicals to shield themselves from harsh conditions. These protective bioactive compounds, known as polyphenols, lend the vibrant hue seen in plants and fruits, such as berries and avocados. Now, I, alongside my scientific collaborators, have introduced a concept that I'm particularly excited about called xenohormesis. And this concept fundamentally changed how I think about nutrition. Xenohormesis is a biological principle that explains how environmentally stressed plants produce bioactive compounds that can confer stress resistance and survival benefits to animals that consume them. The xeno means cross species, and hormesis is the term that what doesn't kill you makes you live longer and be healthier. 
And so we're getting cross-species health improvements by molecules that plants make. And plants make these molecules when they're also under adversity or perceived adversity. And that's because these plants make these colorful and xenohomatic molecules that make themselves stress resistant, turn on their sirtuin defenses, the sirtuin genes, remember. And when we eat them, we get those same benefits. That's the idea. And we've evolved to do so. This isn't a coincidence. It's our theory that we want to know when our food supply is under adversity because we need to get ready for a famine. So we hunker down and preserve our body. And by eating these colored foods, so practically speaking, if it's full of color, if there's been some chewing by a caterpillar organically grown locally in local farms, I'll eat that. Let me give you a practical example of how I incorporate this into my daily routine. In the morning, if I'm having yogurt, I'll add a handful of blueberries. The polyphenols in those berries are activating my longevity pathways, essentially putting my cells into a mild stress response that makes them more resilient. Throughout the day, I might snack on blackberries or raspberries. I'm looking for that deep, rich color that tells me the plant was stressed when it grew, which means it produced more of these beneficial compounds. The key is not to overdo it. Remember, berries still contain fructose, so I'm mindful of portions. But the polyphenol content is so valuable for activating sirtuins and other longevity pathways that I consider them essential in my diet, my practical approach to fruit consumption. Now, let me pull this all together and give you my practical approach to incorporating these fruits into a longevity-focused diet. First, avocados are my daily staple. I'll have half to a whole avocado most days, often with eggs in the morning or in a salad at lunch. The oleic acid content and the fact that it's essentially sugar-free make it perfect for maintaining stable blood sugar while getting beneficial fats that activate my sirtuins. Second, cantaloupe I'll have a few times a week, usually as a snack or with breakfast. I appreciate that it gives me substantial nutrition, vitamins A and C, potassium hydration, without spiking my blood sugar the way other fruits do. The key is portion control. I'm not eating an entire cantaloupe in one sitting. Third, berries, particularly blueberries and blackberries, I consume regularly but mindfully. A handful in yogurt, a small bowl as a snack, maybe mixed into a smoothie. I'm strategic about timing too. If I'm going to have fruit with sugar, I prefer to have it earlier in the day or after exercise when my body's more insulin sensitive. The overarching principle I follow is this. Maximize nutrition, minimize sugar, and specifically look for compounds that activate longevity pathways like sirtuins. That's why these three fruits made my list when thousands of others didn't. I'm also very conscious of where my food comes from. I mentioned this with berries, but it, it applies to all my fruit choices. Um, organic, locally grown produce tends to have higher polyphenol content because those plants experienced more natural stressors. They weren't coddled with pesticides and perfect conditions. That stress makes them and subsequently me, stronger. The bigger picture, fruit in the context of longevity. Now, I want to address something important. Some people hear that I limit fruit and they think I'm anti-fruit. That's not accurate at all. What I'm against is the excessive consumption of fructose, particularly from processed sources or from over-consuming even natural fruits. Uh, our modern diet is drowning in sugar, and that includes the, the well-intentioned but excessive fruit consumption I see in many health-conscious individuals. You have to understand that from an evolutionary perspective, fruit was a rare treat. Our ancestors might have encountered ripe fruit seasonally, and when they did, they gorged on it to store energy for leaner times. But we're no longer in that environment. We have access to every fruit imaginable year-round, and many people eat fruit multiple times daily. That constant influx of fructose even from natural sources, keeps your blood sugar elevated, feeds cancer cells, promotes inflammation, and accelerates aging through glycation processes. This is why I'm so selective about which fruits I eat and how much. The three fruits I've shared with you today, avocados, cantaloupe, and berries, represent my carefully considered choices based on decades of research. They offer the best balance of longevity promoting compounds relative to their sugar content, but remember, these fruits work best as part of a comprehensive longevity strategy that includes predominantly plant-based nutrition, time-restricted eating, exercise, adequate sleep, and stress management. No single food is a magic bullet. If you take away one thing from this video, let it be this. 
Be strategic about your fruit choices. Not all fruits are created equal when it comes to longevity. Prioritize avocados for their oleic acid and so to an activation without any sugar burden. Choose cantaloupe when you want a sweet fruit that delivers maximum nutrition for minimal sugar impact. And embrace colorful berries for their polyphenol content and xenohormetic benefits. But be mindful of portions. And most importantly, always, always keep your blood sugar stable. That's one of the most powerful things you can do for longevity. And your fruit choices play a significant role in that. I hope this gives you a clearer picture of how I think about fruit in the context of healthy aging. If you want to know more about my research and approach to longevity, I encourage you to explore more of my work. Remember, your diet is one of the most powerful tools you have for extending your health span and potentially your lifespan. Use it wisely.